What it do YouTube, it's your boy Pizzo Malone We are back with another video Now today we are going to be reacting to deleted scenes from the film Uncle Tom Now I never actually watched the film Uncle Tom But I did hear about it So I know these deleted scenes are going to be very special So let's get right into this reaction, let's go Alright, let's see what these deleted scenes talk about, man If you've not seen Uncle Tom The movie that I executive produced, that Justin Malone directed And that writer Ansel co-wrote You're missing out Just missing go to UncleTom.com Okay, you know, I gotta check that out for sure. Everything we wanted in the film would have been a 10 hour film. We mm -hmm. got a lot of outtakes. Here's one on the real origins of Uncle Tom. <coughs> how, how could you be a black man posing for a Because I'm not led by the nose. I think for myself. Mm, okay, see, I like when you could think for yourself. I like that. When you could think for yourself, that separates you from the people that's not thinking for themselves and they're led by others. So you already different right then and there. I like that. Man doesn't think for me. The black man doesn't think for me. I don't need mm, Jesse Jackson. He is speaking right now. Who is this man right here? Because he's speaking right now. You can't let... What what the black people usually do speak for you. you can't let what the white people usually do speak for you You got to do what you do what you feel right in your heart and what's right by what you know Like you feel me? you gotta really do what's right by you don't do what's right by society If if it's actually if what if what you feel is right by you it is right by society then go along with it But if you feel what's right by society is not right by you then don't do it and that's a fact right there man I'm, let's keep watching this though i mean i ain't gonna pause too much it's like a 13 12 minute video so let's let's keep watching and i'll show you the rest of those clowns let's see this so trump ain't a clown no trump is not a clown okay i think it's condescending he to assume that because i'm a black man i'm supposed to vote for a democrat whether it's coming from the media telling me to do it or from a politician telling me to do it or even from another black person to tell me to do it you can't on one hand say that you're against slavery but then on the other hand tell me how to vote mm. what to wear how to speak how to, act. how to live my life because black people are supposed to do these things they're supposed to vote this See, don't ever get led by the supposed to or the you should do. Man, don't ever, ever get led by that, bro, because you will literally fall to your own demise doing that. People literally will get blinded, get distracted by what's going on and not even realize the bigger picture. You got to, man, pay attention. They're supposed I ain't to trying to say too much. To pay pay attention. You're supposed to uh, believe a certain thing because that's slavery. You can't say that you're against slavery, but then put me in a box and tell me that I, this is how I have to perform. Yeah. You, you called me a nigger. Like, you I called me. Call you no yes, you did. No, I didn't. You did. No, I did say you but did you can say that. Right. That's just constitutional right. You. you know anything about the Constitution? I house nigga. I didn't call you a nigger. Oh. What's the difference between saying you a house nigga and a nigga, bro? I'm so confused. Man, let oh man, let me keep watching this. Bro. Okay, that's that's a big difference. <laughs> that's right. Oh, is that my Uncle Tom? Yeah. To call somebody an Uncle Tom is completely idiotic. I never even because if you've read Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, you'll see that Uncle Tom was actually a, a very good person. Okay. He did a lot of good things. Uncle Tom. He sacrificed on behalf of other slaves who were on the plantation. In many ways, it's there's there's a lot of dramatic. Is that Miss Candace Owens? Uncle Tom. When you use the term Uncle okay. Tom to demean someone, being ignorant, not knowing the history of what Uncle Tom means, it's ignorant. You know, you're you're literally just signifying the fact that you yourself are ignorant. I've been educating myself on the story of Uncle Tom and learning about Josiah Henson. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to tell y'all. He's a completely good person, completely opposite of what the black community thinks Uncle Tom is. Uncle Tom was the hero. <laughs> yeah? He was the hero. He was self-sacrificing. And ultimately, he paid the ultimate sacrifice for not ratting out the other slaves that had escaped. Uncle Tom I gotta, the hero. Uh, I have to um, check up and do my research because I don't really, I don't really know the Uncle Tom backstory and the history or what what people even say about Uncle Tom. I don't even know. Man, I feel so young listening to this. What do they say about Uncle Tom? I have no idea. Harriet Beecher Stowe's <laughs> novel, Uncle Tom's Am I behind? Cabin, and nobody knows that, so they call us Uncle Toms to hurt us. And every time we get called, I just go, "Oof, you should read the book." A lot of Uncle Tom like kind of flip the narrative on Uncle Tom. I mean, we embrace it. Like a black person acting. Okay, you know, I get say, it. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that's me. I'll get into debates with people. I get it. They'll call me an Uncle Tom, and I'll say thank you. I appreciate the compliment. It should be a badge of honor. I wear it as a badge of honor. I, I like to tell people I'm a proud Uncle Tom. Uh, uh. This whole scenario 
Just be you, bro. You don't have to be an uncle. This, that, none of that. Just be you, bro. I know people are going to call you that, and you're going to be like, yeah, I'm just proud. Well, no, I'm not none of that. I'm just feeling how I feel. That's a, a, just is what it is, man. It's indicative yeah, what of is. the problem with the black community. The man who's trying to save the black community is demonized, and the one who's damaging and destroying the black community, a lot of people don't even know him. They don't even know the demon in, the, in their own community. Mm. But the one who's helping them, they want to throw you away. Mm. What they're actually meaning to call someone is a Sambo, which Sambo was the one who was always telling on the other slaves and telling the master where the slaves were hiding. He wanted to see the slaves get caught in the master triumph. Sambo was so who I, they referred to mm. as Uncle Tom. And uh, then they just switch it to Sambo. They don't, they don't stop and think to say, well, man, all these years I've been saying, wow, I have been kind of brainwashed to a bit to, to see mm. it this way. And they don't, they don't see that. They just completely move Uncle Tom aside and bring in Sambo, and now you're I Sambo. wonder why, though. Now, after we develop a vaccine for the coronavirus, can we develop one for white guilt? I can deal with an honest bigot than mm -hmm. I can a patronizing liberal. I can change a bigot faster than I can a patronizing liberal. I'm going to now lead us in an apology from white Americans to African Americans mm, on behalf okay. of our country, okay. um, to you and to your ancestors and uh, to all of your people. So to the African Americans in the room who would uh, wish and be willing to participate in this, please stand up. I saw a clip of Marianne Williamson where she had a bunch of white people. And now I'd like to ask white Americans who are sitting near you. Stand around Please black people in this church and, and repeat this solemn chant of I'm sorry basically for all the atrocities that my people committed against you. Mm. On behalf of myself and on behalf of my country. If this is genuine then this is very good. I actually like respect this right here. To you and all African Americans. I don't understand the fetishization of victimhood that white progressives want to put on to the African-American community. What you mean, bro? It's like, how dare you think that you are in the level of society where I am? What do you mean by that? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you mean by that one, you my boy. You need to believe in the myth of whiteness and privilege. You need to understand that you're just not going to be as good as I am in society. For all the oppression... You trying to say that's what's and going, all of going the right now, or what she's I trying apologize. to do? That's what the white progressive burden is, and it's weird. I I, I will never understand it. Mm. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said it best. He said that one of the most difficult human phenomena to confront is not malice, because malice you can confront with violence. It's folly. Mm. It's when someone is doing something that they believe to be in your interest. And the more you say to them, you're strangling me to death, oh, but I love you. At their core, a white liberal is the ultimate narcissist. That's it. The ultimate narcissist. It's the, the people that adopt animals for the purpose of saying, I adopted an animal. Like, to them, we are, we are these pathetic, cute little playthings that they can then take to their friends and say, look at this person that I help. As we call it, xenophilic tokenism. They I understand that. I definitely understand that. But like I said, if it is genuine, then it is something respectable because people don't have that. Like, there's a lot of black people who don't get help at all. So if they are getting the help, then take the help, you know? And there's people, white people who don't get help, Mexican people who don't get help that would love the help. So take the help when you can get the help. Like I said, if it's genuine, it's very respectable. That's just my opinion. They take on the struggles of others so that they deflect away from talking about actual issues. They want so much to be a good white person and to be perceived as a good white person. And if you want to see if a white progressive is a good white person, put them in the room with a black conservative. See how that conversation goes. Okay. The biggest challenge to try to figure out whether a white liberal is generally just confused or whether they're a narcissist is simply tell them, no, thank you. That's the test that I say that you should do to all white liberals. Say, actually, no, I don't see myself as a victim. Watch how they react. Because if all you're out to do is help black Americans, you come across a black American that says, actually, like, I'm feeling empowered and I feel great, you should be happy. Oh, man, I'm so happy to hear that. That's great. That's not how they react. They freak out. They block you. I'm blocked by Alyssa Milana. When it's someone says they're progressive, they shouldn't automatically be perceived as caring, 
non-racist, non-bigoted. Most of my experiences of racialized dialogue in a negative way or in confrontations with white progressives who, who I guess hate me because they hate racism. Just yesterday I got a message from a white lady saying that I was a disgrace to my race. Mm. It was odd what to me that fuck? a white woman would declare me a disgrace to my race based on her own stereotypes and preconceived notions of what minorities should think. They sell this idea of tolerance and inclusivity, and we love everyone, and everyone is welcome here, but no, that's not true. We are only welcome there if we believe exactly what you want us to believe. They will act as if for you to rebuff their overtures of sadness or apology is in itself the most despicable crime. It is Dang. because the modern white liberal needs you to be a victim. They have weaponized the notion of being a victim. And various minorities have latched onto that. And that has become the identity that they've taken on. What message is this sending to these white people that are having to go out in their actual lives or their workplaces or whatever and like deal with white people? The message that it's sending to them is that you have to walk on eggshells with this person. This person is going to be a perpetual victim, and I'm going to be too. I'm going to be so afraid to a interact with this person as if they're a human being that I'm just not going to interact at all. Mm. And I think that that is the real result of all of the woke, explaining, anti-racist, intersectionality crap. Mm. Finally, there was a lot of love for President Donald Trump after these young blacks. Excuse me young black Uncle Tom's visited the White House. Let me see some, man. Hello. We love our President Thank Trump. Thank you guys. Thank yes, you guys. Yes, we do. USA. So these are just like a, a group of Uncle Tom's, huh? Just because they like Trump, they're Uncle Tom's. If you like Trump, you're, Trump, you're Uncle Tom. Is that what it is? Like, I'm... It's so subjective, man. I don't even, huh? USA, that was I don't good. like that. It was great. Part illegal. It was great. That was the, one of the greatest experiences of my life. I would, I would never forget that. It was wonderful, man. It was beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Look at all these uh, Uncle Toms, right? Free-thinking blacks. It was fantastic. It was amazing. It's such an honor to have been able to. I ain't gonna lie, though. You can't be mad about somebody calling you an Uncle Tom and then you go out and say, look at all us. We're Uncle Tom. You, wonder, you, don't, you, like, you can't be mad about somebody calling you an Uncle Tom and you're saying Uncle Tom. Like, come on now. You feel me? Like, I get what you're saying because Uncle Tom is a really good person, but yeah, 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 because the world's gonna, yeah, you feel you just don't call yourself Uncle Tom if you don't want it to be known as something bad because the world looks at it as bad. So then, yeah, just man, get there know. and even see the president in person. Call yourself Uncle Tom's not crazy. Look at all these uh, Uncle Toms, right? Free thinking blacks. It was fantastic. It was amazing. And it's such an honor <laughs> to have been able to get there and even see the president in person. It was uh, amazing. I just met the president, man. He told me I was the flyest guy in the room. Uh, it was an honor. Thank you. You know, they didn't think I would be here, guy from the streets. You, you know? see, like, you see this man right here? This is why I can't be mad. If you think that way, and then you get to go meet your man, Donald Trump, that Donald Trump's your man, you get to go meet him, and you're super happy, how can I be mad at that? Like, you're happy as long as it's not messing up my my you think my good way of living my simple way of living then come on man i'm not gonna be mad at you i'm not gonna hate on you this man looks like he's happy he was he's excited he got a compliment from uh donald trump man some man like say you got a compliment from somebody you really like you can't just be mad you can't be mad at that even see the president in person i wouldn't was, be uh, mad at amazing. Shit. i just met the president man he told me i was the flyest guy in the room it was an honor. Thank you. You know, they didn't think I would be here, guy from the streets in the White House. Do you think for sure, I my boy? I never think I'd be one of the first in my family to be invited to the White House as a black man. You, you, know, you feel me? You see, that's an accomplishment for him, even if he I is a Uncle Tom. Amazing experience. Lots of regular Americans getting in there, having People an get opportunity to, to share too. laughs with the President of the United States. Personally, that I don't know if experience. I would do it, but I'm I just saying. I lost my voice a little bit. You see? He's a regular American shook his hand, getting in there, bro. having that's, an opportunity to share laughs with the President a of the United States. 
It was a great experience. I shook his hand. Awesome. I lost my voice a little bit, so I'm sorry. It was amazing. She had a great time. See the president, see the vice president. Yes, sir. See the White see House. See many black American conservatives. So it was just lit, it was energy. This is um, our third, just me and her third time. So every time we go, President Trump, he's like so funny and it's just lit. Yeah. The energy is amazing every time. I, feel I can't cap. We all might disagree with our statement, with Trump's statements. We might agree with Trump's statements, but that man is funny, bro. Like, come on, bro. You have to laugh when you... Come on, dude. Just the way his voice is, like, it's a meme. He's hilarious, bro. This is, um, you, you have to admit that now. He's not even president time, so. anymore. You can't even do that. Every time we just go, admit, President funny, Trump, bro. he's, like, 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 so funny. And it's just lit. Yeah. The energy is man, amazing every bro. time. Phil, warm. Oh, that man. Electrified. Just like, funny to hear. I caught chills. As soon as he came in, the way the, the crowd erupted in there was, like... The president said we blew his ears out. <laughs> Got a chance to listen to all the things that he's done for the black community. And um, I'm just grateful for this president. I didn't support him uh, the last election. But after seeing what he's done and that speech he gave in there, he's convinced me I'm voting for him in 2020. He made it very clear that he is here to put America first. You know, we have people suffering here. But meanwhile, we're spending so much time and energy devoted towards illegals or people coming to this country unfairly. And, you know, Democrats have made a mess of our inner cities, but he is really trying to root all that mess out and really help people in the ways that are actually effective rather than the empty lies and promises that Democrats have been giving, but we haven't had any results. So people are waking up. People are changing. Humans are naturally conservative. Yeah. Because we're human. You grow up being told to work hard for what you got. You don't, you don't grow up being told you're going to get something because you just want it. You saying, like, you ain't got to work for it. I ain't going to lie, bro. That's just, you, can't, you can't base all your experiences off everybody else's because he's definitely talking about his experience. Some people get exactly what they want in life and they don't ever have to work for nothing. So, man, you, you feel me? I'm just saying. Because we're human. You grow up being told to work hard for what you got. You don't, you don't grow up being told a lot of humans do because you just want it. You saying, like, you ain't got to work for it. We, we, we went, when I went in the store and I tried to get a Snickers and I ain't had no money for it, I'm going to smack my hand, put that Snickers back. You got you some Snickers money? You know what I'm saying? But Democrats, they say, hey, we give you everything for free. That ain't reality. Because nothing is free because we pay for everything with our taxes. They work for us. It was Donald Trump who okay. woke me up, man. At first, when he was he was nominated and, and he was elected, I was not a big fan. But to see the things he's done for black community, to see things he's done for America in particular, I'm a huge fan now, and he has my support four more years, and okay. I'll be voting for Donald J. Trump. And, See you there. And, and when he told us, when he asked us, what the hell do we have to lose, I said, that is exactly right. right. Our schools are horrible. Our communities are horrible. We got to do something about uh, we it. We have to do something about it. And he is. But, but I know with him, we're going to make a big change here in America. I think okay. a lot of African Americans are waking up and they're coming to the realization that Trump is great for America. Trump has done so many fantastic things, not only for, you know, what you think the white people or the rich people, but for the black people, for the Asian people, for the Latino people, for everyone. He has done something amazing, and he will keep doing things amazing. And when he is elected in 2020, he will continue to make this country better than it was before. Mm. It's easy to now we know what happened there, excited but... about our president mm. who is putting your needs first. And that's too often, too often something that we don't hear from the mainstream media is the way he's trying to help America be the best that it can be. So it was fantastic to be there and, you know, just basically... That is one thing I will agree with. We didn't hear a lot of the things that Trump did good. I would be believe that Trump didn't do any good if I, you feel me, just sat in my house all day. I would think Trump didn't do nothing for nobody. And I would think he did all bad if I just sat in my house and looked at my phone all day because they was telling, showing all the bads, all the things he said about the C-19, all the, you feel me, just all the bad. They showed all that. So I don't even really know the good. So I can't even really say nothing. It's just like these people seem like they know what they're talking about. So I just got to do some research or something. Who is putting your needs first. And that's too often, too often something that we don't It's crazy hear. how people can have one perspective, people that really, really love Trump and understand what he's going through and what he's going for. And there's people that really, really hate Trump and don't, man, they, what? They don't want to see him. Uh, they want to see him self-delete. They don't want that. They don't want that man on this earth no more. Like, it's crazy how different it is. It's that line right there in the middle. And I ain't seen no person that's in the middle for real unless you talk about me because I'm, man, free thinker for real. From the mainstream media. Keep watching. It's the way he's trying to help America be the best. 
he will continue to make this country better than it was before. It's easy to get excited about our president who is putting your needs first. And that's too often, too often something that we don't hear from the mainstream media, is the way he's trying to help America be the best that it can be. So it was fantastic to be there and, you know, just basically tell him thank you for standing up for us. Because we know that he takes a lot of a lot of hits from the media for us, and we're, we're so happy to support him. You gotta love this man, man. He brings togetherness, man, and that's what it's about. Unity, as Americans, America first, man. The media wants people to think that, you know, the black community hates Donald Trump, but that's not necessarily true. This event is proof, and I know you can say it's a small fraction of, you know, the black population, but they have family members and other people, friends who weren't able to come here, that they, uh, they're ecstatic that they're here. I don't think they're gonna show this. Because they wanna like, like, oh, Trump is racist. They're not gonna show this because they that's not a part of their narrative. They're gonna want to ignore it and, and hope it goes away. That's how they that's how they deal with like an inconvenient I will say the media does play a big part nowadays in the presidency and what's going on. Like, man, you you it's so hard crazy the way times are changing in this world you don't even know what to expect in the next five years or how the next presidency is going to play out who is going to be the one on top how the media is going to swing it how you feel me just optics are going to work into it how optics are going to play into it it's just man everything is different now let's keep watching though uh a fact that they'll bury it they'll ignore it or they'll twist it because they don't want to pretty much deal with the truth and the fact of the matter is uh, the conservative message resonates with black America. And, you know, as time continues to turn, uh, the Democrats are going to have to reckon with that eventually. The, yeah. the little coverage that it seems that we do get in this movement is that we're paid, that we're tokens, that we're not actually believing in the voices that are speaking and that we are being used and paid for by politicians. And that's so, couldn't be so far from the truth. But that is how they like to paint us, specifically black conservatives. They like to deem us as tokens. Instead of just telling the truth. It seems like they're so scared to tell the truth because they know, like, our community will wake up if they get the truth out there. The media for a long time has uh, fooled the black community into believing uh, that Republicans are racist. But when we study our history, we find out that the, it was the Republicans that actually passed the first civil rights bill, and it was the Republicans that abolished slavery. And so now that we're starting to learn for ourselves no and think for ourselves, um, you're going to see a lot of more black people voting for Republicans. It's growing every day. We see day. that on the ground every day. We see that on our social media every day. We interact with people every day that are waking up, that see this movement happening. So you have black conservatives not being scared to come out here and show who they are anymore. And you're going to have a revolution of young ki young children out there in the future. They won't be so young anymore. And they're going to be speaking their mind and they're going to be speaking the truth. And they're going to be proud of who they are, conservatives. You can't shut them down. You can't shut them down on the social media. And they will always be who they are. And we want all the smoke. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh! You say you want what? The truth. We want all the huh? They are conservatives. You can't shut them down. You can't I, I thought you were like that. I thought you were soon time, my boy. You say you want you what? Shut them down on the social media. They will always be who they are. And we want all the smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, want no smoke, gang. Because you, no smoke. Pit, pit, pit like this, no right? smoke. <laughs> you think you can bully people to stop doing something, right? Call us coons, all them type of names, right? <laughs> Usually people run into their little cubby hoes after that. Uh -huh. But I feel like we, it's a new movement now, yeah. and we want all the smoke. It's really yeah. clear. Okay. You feel me? Like Antifa, they shit. keep bullying people because people allow themselves to get bullied. Yeah. But see, the difference is we want all the smoke. Oh. You know what I'm saying? You can't people get bullied down. People tell me that I'm a hat, so I bought the biggest MAGA hat. Oh. Then I bought a bigger one. Oh. So next time somebody say something to me, duh, common sense, a bigger one. It's simple math, really, when you put, put it all together. So I feel like we started doing Hey man, they support Trump, man. I need some people that support me like the people who support Trump. Cause man, I mean, hey man, come on now. Nah. Come on now. Nah. And uh we want all the smoke. That's my message, period. You want the all the Uncle smoke Tom, behind Trump. I need somebody that want Tom. all the smoke Tom. behind me. It's gonna be far more widely available soon on play. I'm gonna have to go check that out, UncleTom.com. I'm gonna have to watch the Uncle Tom movie so I can see what's going on more. Cause man, that was very crazy. And that was only the deleted scenes. That was the stuff they didn't put in the movie. Now imagine what they did put in the movie. That's the end of this reaction though, man. We have other reactions on this channel. We have more reactions to come in the future. If you guys could like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, that'd be good for me. And we out.